I don't always wear animal print, but when I do, it's because we're talking about animals. <sighs> I'm so glad you're here. Because that means you're thinking about potentially making one of the best decisions you'll ever make, potentially. Potentially. Pets are the best, but they are a big undertaking and not something to do on a whim. So today we are going to do a deep dive and look at all the costs involved in adopting a pet. This video is extremely timely because yesterday was actually the one year anniversary of me adopting my dog and she has changed my life and the course of the outflow of the cash that I earn. Now, the goal here is not to scare you off from adopting a pet. The goal is simply to put every single potential cost on the table, just so that there are no surprises when you first adopt your pet. There are four different kinds of costs associated with adopting a pet. One-time costs, growing costs, ongoing costs, and occasional costs. I cannot say the word costs anymore. First, we have our one-time costs. These are the costs associated with adoption and theoretically will only need to be purchased once when you first adopt your pet. Things like food and water bowls, certain vet procedures, or the proper gear for your new tank or terrarium. Do the proper research on your specific pet that you're wanting to adopt and make sure that you've accounted for all the initial supplies you will need when first bringing this pet into your home. Next, we have growing costs, and these don't apply to all animals. When I say growing costs, I mean literally, is your animal growing? Growing costs include anything that they may grow out of as they get bigger, such as a kennel or carrier, a bed, a collar. And just like kids who need shots and vaccinations as they grow up, so do pets. The thing about growing costs is that not all of them are necessary. For instance, does your dog need a dog bed or is he going to sleep on the couch? And while I don't recommend sticking your puppy in his full adult size kennel, because he will pee in the corner, you can get kennels that are designed to adjust in size as your pet is growing. But a good rule of thumb when thinking through growing costs is what expenses does a child incur as they're growing up and does that expense or one of similar caliber apply to my pet? Next, you have your ongoing costs. These are monthly, consistent, scheduled, predictable costs that you will always need to pay for your pet for the rest of their life on this earth. This includes things such as toys and treats, any recurring medications such as flea and tick prevention. Do you commute an hour to a nine to five job every day and need a pet sitter to stop in and take care of your pet while you're away? And lastly, we have our occasional costs. They don't happen all that often, maybe not even every year, but they're important and we need to know to save for them now. Perfect example, did you know your dog can actually incur some very serious health complications if you don't get his teeth professionally cleaned every once in a while? Unfortunately, these occasional costs are often the ones that are also unpredictable, such as, are you saving for vet emergencies? Just like humans need an emergency fund or a medical fund, so should your pet. Now, that right there is already a lot to consider. Adopting a pet is so much more than just their adoption fee or paying for their food every month. But now, on to the actual costs of the actual different types of pets that you can actually adopt. Now first, I'll say that I am not considering farm animals or exotic animals. These are your more traditional live-in-home pets that you see in the movies, around town. So if you're trying to adopt like a sloth or something, I'm not your girl. Also, these numbers are approximate and my best guess based on my research. So if you own one of these pets and find that your financial reality in owning them is different, please share your experience in the comments below. Now, there are a few different tiers of commitment levels when it comes to how much money and how much time you have to give your pet. So I'm gonna start small and we'll work our way up. First, rock. Budget friendly. Doesn't eat very much. Very minimal time investment. Just thought I'd throw it in there. Next, if the kids are dying for a pet and you don't have the time or money to give them one, sea monkeys. They only cost eight to $10 for a, a batch, a school, a pride of sea monkeys. And as far as I know, they're very little commitment. I had a few sea monkey experiences as a kid and obviously they're not alive today, but 
I guess that's all I have to say about that. Very similar vein, Ant Farm. They only cost 15 to $25, and again, do you, f you feed ants, right? I guess I didn't do enough research on the ant farm. Next up, hermit crabs. I never had one as a kid, but they are less than $10, and according to my research, only cost about $6 a month. Not gonna lie, I'm not exactly sure what you're buying that would cost $6 a month, but a crab is a crab and, and it's a pet, so. Example of a growing cost though, did you know that hermits change shells throughout their life? So when buying a hermit crab, you also want to buy a few different size shells that he can move into and grow into as he gets bigger. Is that not the cutest thing you've ever heard? Next up, fish. If you're looking to get just one little fish, maybe a beta or a goldfish, it looks like you can get them anywhere between two to $15 for the adoption price. But it looks like those who own just one fish spend anywhere from two to $10 on their fish per month. Next, we have our geckos, lizards, reptiles, creepy crawlies. These will cost you between $20 to $70 for the initial purchase. And with certain reptiles, you do need to maintain a certain climate within their habitat, which requires buying special light bulbs every six months that cost anywhere from $20 to $60. Next, we're looking at rats. The initial adoption of a rat is between $10 and $20. As for a habitat, you can always fund as much as you want, but it seems the initial cost will be between $50 and $200. This price not only covers the cage, but everything that goes inside of it, such as a blanket, food bowl, water dispenser, hammock. I've seen rats with hammocks. I don't even have a hammock. It is also worth noting that rats are a social being. They're not super happy on their own, so you'll want to consider adopting a pair. Next, we have small birds. I was specifically researching canaries, so this is the research I found if you want a canary. Adjust for other species. The cost of a canary can range from $25 to $150. Per year, you can plan to spend about $75 on food, $25 for toys and treats, and $85 for an annual vet checkup. Next, we have our hamster slash gerbil slash guinea pig slash dagu. Never heard of a dagu before, but they're like a cuter guinea pig. The adoption price for one of these furry fellas can be as affordable as a $5 hamster with a $50 setup or a $100 dagu with a $300 enclosure. Their monthly expenses involve food, hay, bedding, and just like the rat, some of these, such as the guinea pig, are social animals, which means you'll probably want to adopt two. If adopting a pair, double the price of all these expenses. Next, rabbit. My first pet was a rabbit. Good old brownie. Adopting a rabbit costs between $20 and $100, and according to my research, rabbits seem to cost between $50 and $150 per month. That was more than I expected. One reason for their pricey monthly cost is that rabbits should be consuming fresh produce on the regular. They also need hay, pellets, and litter. And you'll also want to take them in for a yearly exam, plan on $100. Next up, the pet I always wanted as a kid and never got. The ferret, ladies and gentlemen. They cost between $75 and $250 per ferret. But outside all of these pricier costs, your ferret will only run you about $30 a month on food, toys, and supplies. So big initial investment, but then pretty good from there on out. And now we've finally reached our top pets, the cat and the dog. Adopting a cat from a shelter can cost as little as $25. You will want to microchip your cat and that costs about $60. All spaying, neutering, and required vaccinations will cost between $100 to $200 per cat. And research shows that you will spend between $150 and $3,000 on your cat per year. That's quite the range. I'm not exactly sure what's happening between these two points. But it all depends on what kind of food you're getting for your cat, how often you need a pet sitter, litter, toys, treats. Your cat can play with a milk jug cap or he can play with a pony. 
And lastly, if you are renting a dog, you can adopt from a shelter as affordably as $50. And again, you can spend as much as you want on your dog. To vaccinate, spay, or neuter, it'll cost between $100 and $300, but often that cost is built into the adoption price. Same with cats. Also, according to the internet, the cost of an average emergency vet visit for dogs is about $1,000. So if you're going to adopt a dog, I would start padding an emergency vet fund right now. Forbes magazine said that you will spend between $17,000 and $93,000 on your dog in his lifetime. This is where my plug for pet insurance comes in. I signed up for pet insurance for my dog with Bivy. This is not sponsored. The quote I was given for her age, breed, size was $10 a month. But if you do the math, I am spending $120 on pet insurance a year. Flashback to a month ago when my dog needed to be sedated, have blood work, get x-rays. She's very dramatic. And when I submitted our invoice from that emergency, I was reimbursed more than double what I will pay annually for pet insurance just in that one emergency. So I would just say, if you're considering a cat or a dog, and maybe if you notice that they're extra accident prone or they have a lot of digestive issues, get insurance, you probably won't regret it. And now that we've done a deep dive on what expenses you can expect based on what pet you adopt, let's look at some other factors. First, pets don't just require money, they require time and a lot of it. Your pet absolutely needs love, affirmation, physical affection, just as much as you do. So as you are exploring the idea of adopting a new pet, make sure that this is the right season to bring that new companion into your life. Next, make sure you know the breed and temperament of the animal you are adopting. For example, when I adopted my dog, she's a mix, she's a mutt, I don't really know what she is, but it didn't take long for me to discover after adopting her that she is a guard dog. Man oh man, is she a guard dog. But I will say, in that regard, my life got harder than easier. So if you're looking for your life to stay quiet, simple, easy, just make sure you're investing in the right pet, because she's what we call a handful. Next, no matter what pet you have, a frog or a Great Dane, make sure you have a backup medical emergency fund for that animal. I promise you it'll be so much easier to pay for their emergencies if you've prepared for it than if you are just hoping nothing bad ever happened. That makes sense, right? And lastly, animals are not too different from humans. They can have depression, anxiety, special diets. I for one have learned that my dog is not a piece of cake. She has food allergies and a very special diet and she also definitely has anxiety. So just know that there might be a lot of ways you'll need to invest in your pet outside of just playing and cuddling. <sighs> I hope this wasn't doom and gloom. Now that that's out of the way, let me just say, Pets are the best. My dog can pee on the carpet every single day and I still love her to pieces. So don't let these costs scare you off. Just make sure that you are fully prepared before diving in with your new best friend. They are well worth the category line in your budget and are worth every penny that you invest in them. If you have any other tips or advice on the cost of adopting and owning a pet, please share them below for other wine avers to enjoy. And now, after all this pet talk, I think I need to go cuddle mine stat. So I'll see you next week. Here at YNAB, we love pets. So I thought I'd give you a peek at some of the pets on the YNAB team. Hey, Dale.